Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the SP 500, and today is CMS Energy Corporation, ticker CMS. Over the next few minutes, I'll discuss my thoughts on both the valuation of this company and its business quality. This is a utility company. It says it's in the multi utility industry. We have a market cap of $19 billion, $31 billion in enterprise value. That means you have about $11.5 billion in additional debt on this business. So it is quite leveraged. They have electric utilities, gas utilities, primarily in Michigan. So it's US based, gives you some idea of what they're doing. They generate, purchase, transmit, and distribute sale of electricity. So they cover all different sources. Um, they're not limited to one source, coal, wind, gas, renewable energy, oil, and nuclear. Um, gives you some idea, but basically a utility company. Utility companies tend to be relatively lower quality because their returns on capital are capped by regulators. So something to keep aware of. It does explain the low beta of 0.27 here, which is usually a very, very good sign of quality because it means relatively low volatility. However, that low volatility is going to be driven because they have basically regulated returns. So that's what you can kind of see here. You see this 10% line on return on invested capital. We can clearly see that they are not reaching a 10% return on invested capital in any of these years because of that. They're averaging basically 3%, 3 4% return on invested capital every year for a decade at least. Um, they did have lost 2002, 2003, 5, 6, 7. These five years of losses in 20 years would normally eliminate them from my consideration, but because it was all isolated in this early period, um, I'm willing to forgive that on its own. What I'm not willing to forgive is these low returns on capital. Utility companies have this problem all the time, that because they have low returns on capital, it's very hard to get sufficient returns to the equity holders. You need lots of debt, and that leverage is very, very important for them to know to, to operate the business. I mean, if we simply look at the revenue line, you have $6.2 billion in revenue and you barely grow to $7.3 billion in revenue over the course of 10 years. That's 20% growth over the course of 10 years, 1.2% revenue, 10 year CAGR. That simply is too small of growth for me to be interested as an investor. Um, these asset growth growing much faster than revenue is what partially causes these low returns on capital. They're likely going to be having to um, either dilute shareholders or continuously raise debt in order to even pull off what we're seeing here, which is a return on equity of 13.5%. Now, I like that this is over 10%, but I really want to hit this 15% number for return on equity. But it doesn't really matter because even though you have this high return on equity, you're not getting very strong growth. Now, what is interesting is you do have a big jump in earnings per share in 2021. I don't really know why that is. Um, but overall, you do see about a 7% growth in earnings per share if you just go from 2012 to 2020. You basically double your earnings over the course of a decade, but it turns into a quadruple when you consider um, you know, three or four X when you consider 2021. So that's a really exceptional growth in 76% per year, but it's likely not sustainable. So I do question that. Um, they are paying dividends. So the return of this capital doesn't tell us everything we see here. Now, PE is reasonable, 15, but the, the revenue growth is just really, really low. So let's see if we can learn more on the income statement. Before we do that, if you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button. Your like buttons, your likes really tell YouTube that you're enjoying my content. So without those, I can't grow the channel. Other people won't be able to find it. So like every video that you enjoy of my content. If you want to see more videos like this, if you want me to study more companies, then Shout out in the comments what you'd like to see, but most importantly, hit that subscribe button. Your subscriptions help me to grow the channel. If you ring the bell, you'll get notified as I upload new videos each and every week covering stocks, covering investments, covering just different ways to think about different ideas. So hit that subscribe button and let's dive back into the income statement. So gross profit, we're seeing about a 50% gross profit growth over the course of the decade, but basically no operating profit growth. And that's really concerning because what you see here is the cost of goods sold didn't go up a ton. That allowed them to grow their gross profit, but they allowed their operating expenses to double. And so this is kind of what the management team is going to be managing. And that really shows um, either some mismanagement or just limitations in their business model. I hesitate to say mismanagement. Utilities is a really, really hard business. So it's just something to be aware of. One thing we're seeing here too 
is the pre-tax income isn't growing that much. One of the big benefits that you had um, was kind of a reduction in income taxes being paid. There was a cut in income taxes in 2017, and so you have a drop from paying income tax of like 400 million or 273 million to only paying 100 million, and that massive boost in, in a lot of the earnings per share growth we're seeing is really this change from 2017 to 2018, where you grew almost 50% on the net income line, but that's driven entirely by a decline in the income tax. And so you really have to hesitate to, to rely on the growth that we saw. In addition, they are diluting you more over time. They have a consistently growing share count. You're not getting the share buybacks. And that's also how they're able to grow about their um, balance sheet here. pp &E, pretty common for utility company. You've basically doubled your price, property plant and equipment. Anytime you're growing assets this fast, which is more than 7% a year, then you're going to have a problem in terms of your returns on capital, especially if you're growing assets like here, much faster than you're growing your earnings capability, much faster than you're growing revenue. It's going to continuously lead to lower returns over time. Likewise, they've grown their debt from $6 billion to $12 billion, doubled it over the course of a decade as well. So just something to be aware of. They're not retaining a lot of earnings. They are distributing that out as capital. Um, so you don't see that growing up, but you do just see that continuously growing liability line, which is really growing that portion. Now, one thing here that I don't like to see is this pension liabilities. That's a concern. I don't know what other liabilities are, but it's, it's at six and a half billion. It's actually quite large. Um, so it is something that is concerning to me. Um, that about covers the balance sheet. Pretty cash poor. You don't see a lot of cash on this balance sheet. Cash flow statement. One thing you see is there's significant amount of depreciation and amortization every year. Um, you know, a billion dollars, half a billion, half a billion to a billion dollars, substantially exceeding your net income. So even the money that you're making isn't necessarily very positive. You see a lot of money being thrown into property, plant, and equipment. A lot of money being thrown into other, which is strange. I don't know what other is here. Um, you'd have to study the 10K to get more information about that. But you can see they're issuing common stock each and every year diluting you. That's part of how they're using to pay and grow. If they weren't diluting you, they wouldn't be able to grow because they simply don't have the return on capital. If they weren't adding more debt to the business, they wouldn't be able to grow because they just don't have the returns on capital. So they're paying out dividends, but they can't really pay out dividends and grow at the same time without this Ponzi-like effect of continuous issuance of debt, continued issuance of stock. If either equity holders or debt holders decided to stop allowing them to freely issue, then you would have a problem at this point in the business model would return to relatively low ability to issue your dividends. So for me, this is just a, a typical example of a company I'm not interested in. You have really low returns on capital. You have a five years of losses. Um, you have capped returns on equities because of them being operating in a regulated industry. And the revenue growth is anemic, 1% revenue growth. You're not going to get double digit returns over the long haul when you pay 15 times earnings for a company growing 1%. This company was trading at less than eight times earnings and they didn't have capped returns on equity and they were choosing not to grow and they were distributing a lot of cash to you, then you could you could turn out really well with your investment. But the way that they're structuring it and the way the capital is being managed is just not conducive to long hold, long term wealth for shareholders. So for me, I pass on CMS Energy. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Ring the bell so you get notified as I upload new videos each and every week. And if you'd like for me to cover a certain video, hit it up in the comments. Give me your ideas and we can cover them in the future. If you enjoyed this type of content, if you look want to study companies like this yourself, consider checking out quickfs.net. This is the tool I use to look at my companies and I think it's a great tool for you as well. If you sign up using the link in the show notes right there at the bottom of this video, then I could get a portion of any subscription that you have in the future. And that would be a great way to support me and my YouTube channel through these videos. Thank you for listening. And until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.